Okay, Snow, you're up. Okay, hello everyone, good morning. Um, here is the bulletin editor part of this presentation. Um, introducing me, I'm Aliyah Ali, and I am the IP Division 28 South News Editor. Um, I won Distinguished Newsletter for the 2020 to 2021 term a few weeks ago back at DECON, and also an international committee member representative on the Diversity and Equity Subcommittee. Some fun facts about me is I'm a plant mom and I absolutely love reading. And I also joined Key Club my sophomore year. I use the pronouns she, hers, hers. So what does it mean to be an editor? I had some trouble figuring this out during my the beginning of my term, but I hope this could help you guys figure out what does it mean to be an editor. First off, you as an editor create monthly newsletters to provide the club with information. You also submit articles and visuals for the division newsletter. You publicize events through flyers, posters, and other social medias like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You also follow appropriate guidelines for promotion on social media networks. And finally, you train the editor-elect on graphic standards and network etiquette. Um, this by no means is all your tasks and as an editor, but this is a comprehensive list to help you guys figure out what you're going to do at the beginning of your term. So getting started. As being an editor, you're going to go through a lot of steps, making your newsletters, collecting articles and visuals and such. So here is the first thing you guys need to do. Um, in terms of resources, there are so many resources for you as an editor, and these are really important for you to look over throughout your terms so you guys can have a basic understanding of all the things you need to do. First two guides on here is the 2018 branding guide. It's on the Key Club International website. It's a basic guide to graphics and the guidelines you need to follow during uh, when you're doing anything Key Club related. The second uh, guidebook is the 2019 Key Club Officer book. This um, not only has all the officer roles, but as, um, you also have the editor role on there and it explains your duties and all the things you need to do throughout your term. These two are very general, so I do recommend you guys looking at them briefly, but you don't have to memorize anything in there. Uh, the next four resources are probably the most important ones, so please pay attention. For the DNE graphic design notebook, this is a basic graphic design tips and tricks guidebook, and it just goes over um, a couple of things that you need to do while making graphics, and it gives you some general tips and tricks. Newsletter Production 101 is a, another manual on the CNH website. It's similar to the DNE graphic design, but it's updated and has other, um, other things that it touches on, like um, graphic design tips, newsletter production, as it says, and things that you need to do to make your newsletter as high as quality as possible. Um, next up is the DNE manual. This is super important as it basically tells you how to create a newsletter and all the things while you can do, uh, while you're doing so. This was created by Zoe Yao a couple years back, and it highlights the things you can do throughout your term. The newsletter production manual is also made by Hannah Shim, so you guys can look over these two. They were the district news editors for the past couple of terms, and they basically go over their stylus or their style and their specific things that they used to do in their newsletters. So if you guys are having trouble finding things to do or formatting and such, definitely look over those. Finally is the CNH Graphic Standards Manual. If you're not gonna look at anything else, please, 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 please look at the CNH Graphic Standards Manual. This is the bread and butter of you and throughout your term. Um, basically, you're going to follow all the rules in the CNH Graphic Standards Manual when you're making newsletters, posts, slideshows, emails, or even the website. Anything that you do that is Key Club related has to follow CNH Graphic Standards. It gives you all the guidelines, and I definitely recommend you guys have this saved on your computer. Well, you should have all of these saved, but definitely the CNH Graphics Manual at where somewhere you can quickly reference it to. Next off is tools and programs to use. I've gone through a lot of programs throughout my term, so here's like a comprehensive list of the best programs that I found to work um, on you know, our computers, and it's one of the best pro programs on a comprehensive list. Um, first off are the free programs as PowerPoint, Google Slides, and Canva. I think you guys are very familiar with PowerPoint and Google Slides. Um, most of you do use uh, Google Suite for you know, school, so I definitely recommend you guys use any of these if you are just starting off. 
Um, slides and PowerPoint are obviously free. PowerPoint, it's free on the online version, but it's not free for the actual app version on your computer. So I definitely recommend going through the online version on OneDrive. Um, Canva is also um, for slides, PowerPoint and Canva, you should set your dimensions. Um, I'll explain this later in the power, um, presentation, but you're going to set your dimensions for eight by 11 inches and you can change your formatting throughout the slides. Next off are some apps on your phone that you can download. So first off, we have IBS Paint, Adobe Draw, and Adobe Fresco. These are also all free. Um, IBS Paint is basically like a drawing pad or somewhere where you can draw or paint anything that you want in your newsletter or your graphics. I definitely do recommend this. They have some nice pens and um, it's very nice to download like vectors and PNGs. Second off is Adobe Draw and Adobe Fresco. These are very similar to each other. Um, Adobe Draw or a Vector, I think Adobe Draw Vector, something similar to that. Um, these two are also free. They require a little more knowledge on like formatting and using the app in general, and they're kind of more complicated than IBS Paint, but I do recommend them because their quality is really, really nice, and you can get really nice drawings or even um, fonts, or not fonts, but things that you can draw out that you can insert into your newsletter or anything of the sort. Next off is Google Drawings. It's an extension that you can put on your computer while going, if you go to the Chrome uh, web store and you download it, it's really nice as um, you can add text. For example, if you're working on Canva and obviously Canva does not have the CNH graphic standard text or the fonts that you need to use. So um, in order to get those fonts, I would definitely download whatever you have off of Canva and then put it into Google Drawings and then you're able to insert the fonts that you need, like Century Gothic or Verandetta, et cetera. So next off is TextMeme for all the new fonts. Um, these are nice, really funky fonts that you can use in your newsletter or in your graphics. Um, they add a little spice. And especially recently, CNH has been using the Hello Stranger font. So you guys can use that as well in your newsletters. It's a really nice cursive font. So definitely recommend looking into that. Um, next off is paid programs. Obviously, these are a little more expensive than the first ones, but um, if you do plan on investing or if you use um, any of these Adobe programs, uh, I would definitely recommend using InDesign, Photoshop, or Illustrator. I personally use um, InDesign and Illustrator for newsletter things. Um, Photoshop is a little more complicated, and I did not want to get into that. Um, you can also use Microsoft Publisher. It's basically like PowerPoint. Or it's really similar to, like, creating a PowerPoint, but it's on Publisher, and it has some nice settings that you can use to make your newsletter really nice. Um, by no means you have to have any of these paid programs. You could literally have none of these and create the most amazing newsletters. And just because you do have these programs doesn't mean your newsletter is going to be great. Um, it's all based on you and your vision and your talent. So I definitely recommend looking into them, but if not, Definitely stick to PowerPoint, Google Slides, or Canva, because you can make absolutely amazing um, newsletters or graphics on here. Um, actually, even the district news editors, they use PowerPoint and Google Slides. So by no means, you do have to have these great programs. Next off is newsletter building. Um, setting up, setting up, as I mentioned before, if you're working on any of the programs that I mentioned above uh, for Google Slides or Canva or Word or anything of the sort, you're going to set your um, page settings or dimensions to 8.5 by 11. It's like a standard piece of paper, so it, be, it can come out as a nice PDF. If you're working on Adobe or any of the Adobe um, programs, you're going to make sure that the dots per image are pretty high. Um, I learned this at the district editors program or training conference thing um, that they had at the end of DECON. But if you make sure that your dots per image or dots per page um, is around 170 to 250, it's a setting that you can change. And it can make your newsletter really high in quality and can make the pictures that you insert in your newsletter much nicer. Um, if you have any graphics that you drew, make sure that they're either in PNG or vector format. And this also goes with the pictures that you insert in your newsletter so they can be the highest quality and they can't be blurry. Um, finally, make sure that you have a pen your pencil and the word mark correctly sized because sometimes 
they kind of skew or they're kind of distorted when you're moving around. So definitely make sure that you size your page first before inserting your word mark or any of the images so anything is not distorted. Um, you can find all of these resources on the CNH website under resources slash graphics or under um, officers slash um, editor. Yeah. Next up is collecting articles and visuals. This is basically the meat of your newsletter. First off, you'll have Google Forms. Um, this is one of the many ways that you can um, set up um, a way where you can collect articles and visuals passively. So um, if your club has like an hour reward system, like you send in 10 article or 10 pictures for half an hour or such something like that um definitely use that to your advantage and collect articles and visuals that way because first off it's incentivizing so your members are more likely to do it second off it's a really nice way for you to like click newsletters without having to go to every single individual and asking for them um second off is actually asking members for specific um, articles and visuals from specific events that they went to. It not only allows you to interact with the members, it also makes the members feel important as they are being like featured in the newsletter and it's really nice to have. Um, definitely quality over quantity. Make sure that you have quality, quality articles and visuals because that what's that is what showcases Key Clubbers the best. So obviously don't put in a bunch of screenshots of free rice or anything like that, obviously because we're in a pandemic and we're using all of these um, online uh, service projects, but um, try to make candidates, like if um, the members went to maybe a DCM and they made you know, paper, paper leaves or anything like that, like make sure that they take a picture with their paper leaf or maybe like, Take a picture with their phone uh, of them running like on um, charity miles or something like that. It makes sure, uh, it makes the newsletter much more interesting and also makes your um, production quality much nicer. Due dates. So these are the general due dates that um, are set within um, our region. I don't know if they're different for any other clubs, but these are the general due dates that we have to follow during our term. For club bulletin editors, um, on the 10th of every month, articles and visuals are due. Um, for division news editors, it's due on the 15th of every month. Um, in terms of newsletters, clubs, uh, newsletters are due on the 15th of every month, and division newsletters are due on the 20th of every month. If you guys are club bulletin editors, obviously, because there's no um, division bulletin or uh, division news editor yet, um, you're not going to just ignore the division news editor portion. But as club editors, you have deadlines on the 10th and the 15th of every month. You should definitely keep these due dates in mind when working on your newsletter, because if you're getting articles and visuals from other officers or members, you're you have to make sure that you have enough leeway our time in between you getting your articles and visuals and you creating their newsletter or submitting them because it's going to get really stressful if you're going to have an article and visual coming in at 4 p.m. and all of these are the articles and visuals are due at 6 p.m. So just make sure you have enough time in between collecting and even enough time for the officers and members to um, just in case if something happens, they have enough time to submit these articles and visuals without jeopardizing anything. Next up is newsletter anatomy. So definitely um, one of the most important things I have put on this newsletter anatomy page, these are the requirements. Some of them are requirements, some of them are not, but um, definitely follow this to make um, a really nice newsletter in terms of formatting. First off is your tables of contents. This is most important because it outlines your newsletter and it's basically like a way for members to look through. Um, make sure that all your pages are numbered. Um, the table of contents is the first page and everything after that will be numbered accordingly. Um, you should also um, not like re, um, if there's two pages with the same things on them or similar, it's like a continuation. You don't have to say, um, you don't have to name that twice on your table of contents. You can just put it in once and then skip to the next page number that is a different um, topic. Second off is your lieutenant governor's or president message. Um, if you are a club news editor, um, definitely put the president's message on here. I just have an example from my newsletter and it's a letter from Miss Feliza. Um, second off is, or third off, is your editor's message. This is really important as you're basically um, addressing your audience and it's really nice to have as you can um, basically just 
talk about the newsletter and talk about events that happen throughout the term and maybe some things that you wanted to include that are really important. Fourth is your calendar with division, district, and international events. Um, because there's some, so many things going on online, I definitely recommend you guys have a comprehensive calendar like this and have the dates on the side. Um, it's really nice to have as, you know, members can maybe forget an um, event was happening. So they can just go to your newsletter and find the event and make sure that they are on there on time. Um, third or fifth, is monthly recognition. On the division level, there is obviously monthly recognition, but on the club level, if you guys have member of the month or officer of the month, definitely put that in because it's really nice to recognize your members for their hard work and recognize officers for their hard work. Um, sixth is our educational articles and visuals. This by no means is required, but it's super, super important to educate your members on the workings of Key Club. So for example, in this, um, it was just a promotion on MRP as you know, MRP was the deadlines were coming up and getting that banana bread is super important. Um, just talk about different um, things like PTP, um, CNH partners, Kiwani's family, or anything else that is Key Club related. Um, you can also have other officers on your board work with you on this. Like um, maybe you can have the vice president work on um, maybe talking about Kiwanis or your treasurer talking about fundraising for PTP. And this not only creates like different perspectives that are coming into your newsletter, but also like make sure that the members are really educated and they know what's going on. Seventh is highlighting your articles and visuals. As I mentioned before, this is your meat of your newsletter. So you're basically going to highlight all of the service that the members did throughout that month. Um, this is just a cover page. You by no means have to have one, but it's really nice to you know, separate the beginning of, your newsletter, beginning of your newsletter to the articles and visuals section. Um, definitely highlight all the um, articles and visuals that the members have submitted, but also make sure that there is quality over quantity. Um, eighth is reminders. Um, if you have any important deadlines or events that are happening that are really, really important, um, definitely put them on the reminders page so the members can, you know, go through the entire newsletter and then finally take that last takeaway from the newsletter so they remember what is going on. Um, definitely have that on there. And ninth is promoting the newsletters on the district and division level and also other events that are happening on the district and division level. Um, for here, it was promoting the CNH district newsletter. Um, also make sure that you put in your links for this so the members can just click on it and then go to wherever they need to go. Um, if you're um, having like different newsletters or different um, links that are on there, just make sure to um, hyperlink them so again, members can just find them and promote um, district, division, and international website because it's really hard to find information sometimes and just having that in your newsletter will make sure that everything is accessible for members. Tenth is contacts. Again, as I mentioned before, promoting like division, district, and international websites are important. Also, contact information is really, really important because if a member has a problem or they need, you know, someone to contact, you have the contacts page at the end. So definitely make sure that you have all the emails, again, hyperlinked so the members can just click on it and email them or email you. So it's really nice to have at the end. And it also makes sure that all your information is accessible. Um, finally, is a thank you for reading. This is a really nice way to finish off your newsletter as, you know, it's the little bow on the top for tying everything together. Um, definitely have a nice message or like, see you next time. So not only will members feel like nice and glad that you read the newsletter, but they'll also come back for the next time. I, um, as I mentioned before, promoting like district international websites and all that can be either on the page before or on the thank you for reading slide. I put it here because it's really nice to end off. So if they have any questions, they can just you know click on it and then continue on their stocking page. Okay, so again, I mentioned stocking earlier, but I meant to put it here. Uh, definitely stocking other newsletters and other websites and other um, key club Instagrams is really nice to you know draw inspiration and make sure that you're always keeping things fresh and new and making more interesting spreads. Um, for the first three, I put some of the district or 
different districts newsletters that are really really cool um they also have really nice graphics first off is the pacific northwest district newsletter i think their newsletter name is the expresso they have really really nice graphics and they also have really cool formatting so if you want to draw any inspiration from there you can um, there's also the CNH Keywinds District Newsletter. CNH Keywinds is a um, district that is in California, Nevada, Hawaii, but they are a separate district. So you could call us sister districts if you like, but they basically um, are in the same areas where CNH would be. Um, but they're different schools and they have um, a distinct graphic, you know, for graphic style, so you can recognize them almost everywhere. Um, the CNH Keywinds District Newsletter also incorporates that specific graphic style as well as on their website. So I definitely would recommend you guys look into that. And finally is the Texas Oklahoma District Newsletter. It's really similar to the Pacific Northwest District Newsletter and their like graphic style, but they also have different elements that you would like to include, especially on their two most recent newsletter publications. And the last two are division newsletters. Um, first off is the JET division on in CNH Keywinds, as I mentioned before, because of their distinct graphic um, style. It's really nice to see and look and draw inspiration. And second is the Division 10 Turtles newsletter on the CNH, um, in CNH. Um, they have, again, really, really cute graphics, uh, especially because um, since we're in a pandemic, we can't put, you know, pictures of members doing service on the front page. So instead, you know, they use different, um, they use their turtle um, mascot and they created like really nice, cute graphics with that. Um, now we're going to talk about sharing resources. When you're working on the club or division level, you're going to have to share, you know, articles and visuals and all the information that you've collected over, you know, that one month period with either the tech editor or your historian or anything else. So if you're getting articles and visuals separate from what your historian has given you, definitely upload it to your shared drive and all the things that you collected from the members. And the same thing if you have a tech editor and if they're working on the web website, one of their requirements is to have, you know, pictures from out throughout the term and definitely having these pictures to choose from is really, really important to make sure that everything is running smoothly. So um, just make sure that you're sharing your resources with your other officers. Um, how do you share your resources accordingly? First off, you're going to have to name your files. Um, Josh mentioned this before with naming files, but the naming schemes that we used on the division level um, were a little different, but these are the naming schemes that I found most um, most productive. So first off is um, you can use the abbreviation of the event name. So it can be like the event name, month, and then the number. So if it's like um, the first picture or the first article from that event, you can put 01 or 03 or whatever accordingly. So for example, we have decon and it was in April, so 04, and then 01, which would be the number of pictures that was in that section or the number of articles in that section. Not only will this help you organize your files, but it will also help you have a seamless transition of materials so everything can run smoothly within your club. Finally, is getting distinguished and outstanding. As I mentioned before, I had gotten distinguished on the, uh, the division level, so I definitely have some things to say about this. First off is take advantage of your emails. This is so, so important as you're going to be sending a lot of emails throughout your term. So make sure that you're sending emails that can be inserted into your award application. By that, I mean, make sure that you have email etiquette. And for Key Club, most of the time, um, I've seen emails uh, or email etiquette be like, um, make sure that your emails follow graphic standards and you can also um, have like, you know, different fonts or not fonts, sorry, different colors in your email. So like in section off specific parts. So for example, you can be like, hello, snow and hello, snow or aloha, sea monkeys or whatever you have. And it can be bolded and a different color and it can be italicized or whatever you want. And you can also, you also have to make sure you, that you sign off your emails. So it can be like swimming in service and then your name and your um, position and your contact information. And this is really nice to have because at the end of your term, you're going to have to take screenshots and collect all of these things. So definitely make sure to follow email etiquette throughout your term. Um, second off is building relationships. You should definitely keep close contact with your other officers and your LTG. Reaching out 
uh, you also have to reach out to your faculty Kiwanis, or your faculty and your Kiwanians. So distribution of newsletters is one of the requirements on the distinguished slash outstanding form. So definitely make sure that you send your newsletters monthly when you publish them to your Kiwanians, your faculty advisors, to your other officers, and to your LTG. Um, try to make make when you're sending these um, emails, try to make sure that you have um, them in PDF and link form so it's most accessible and if there's any problems with the link they can just click on the PDF and yeah so you also should make sure that you publish or publicize your newsletters and at general meetings on social media or at events and DCMs so I think it's really important to make sure that everyone has this information as it should be um, most inclusive and so more on that later but um, make sure you publicize these and make sure that everyone gets the newsletter. Third off is educating members. So every newsletter, as I mentioned before, should try to include an education section. You don't have to do this, as I mentioned before, but it's really, really, really important as, you know, other members can be educated on the workings of Key Club. So maybe you can have different officers, again, um, help with your newsletter production in terms of these education sections and you should make sure to give credit where it's due So if your vice president works on a article for your newsletter or a section for um, an education section Definitely make sure that they are credited and you give credit where it's due um, Fourth is you are always learning as an editor. You will never be a hundred percent a hundred percent at your peak because um, you're always learning and you always have things to grow on and move, um, basically grow in. Um, definitely join your Google Reflectors um, specifically for the editors and your tech editors as feedback. You'll get feedback from your district and division news editors. Um, it's also really important that you're getting, you know, feedback from your other officers or from other editors throughout the division. Uh, definitely ask for help always and always make sure that you are on the lookout for new things that you can put into your newsletter and you're always um, evolving and always changing. Growth is one of the many things that you'll experience as an editor throughout your term. So I think it's really important to keep an open mind and definitely um, make sure that you're always learning new things. So that's it. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put them in the chat. Any questions out of anybody? <clears throat> All right, let me stop the recording.